Tangle Hierarchy 2 is essentially a second iteration of an exhibition that happened at John Hansard Gallery in Southampton, UK on 2nd of June 2022, exactly 75 years since a momentous meeting between Gandhi and Mountbatten that happened to be a Monday of Gandhi's silence, his weekly day of silence. Mountbatten was perhaps meeting Gandhi to seek his approval to announce partition which happened on the very next day. Gandhi's own views of partition were widely known in the public domain. On these envelopes that he may have received from different parts of the world, he actually wrote saying that he won't speak on that day. Also stating that he's not speaking because Mountbatten would not want him to speak. Thus, in a way, delivering the responsibility of his silence onto Mountbatten. We don't know what Mountbatten said to Gandhi, but in his silence, he leaves behind these archival notes that in a way become the central pivot within the exhibition. And these notes, in a way, sit in the same, almost in alignment with these two boxes. One being the mirror box by V. Ramachandran, the neuroscientist, and the other, these trunks that travelled across the borders at the moment of partition. One of the elements in the exhibition is the superimposition of time you know, and date. A, a condition that I often think of as a very relevant condition for us to think about the world. You know, they allow us to wormhole through historical moments to make sense of the present. And the Gandhi notes sit alongside not just historical documents, but artworks and scientific artifacts that produce between them these conceptual, speculative loops that hopefully the viewer might reconfigure in the process of actually seeing the exhibition. With the mirror box, it allows, in a way, this doubling of a limb, which allows the sort of lost arm of the amputee to return in the reflection of the existing arm. And perhaps through the movement of the existing arm, relieve the pain in the arm that was just lost. Alongside Alexa Wright's photographs, made in collaboration with an amputee, almost reimagining the invisible hand, but also Kaderatya's long-form video, which is a prolonged reflection on the idea of phantom pain in lost arms, in lost limbs, but also a kind of idea of a residual pain within lost memories, within peoples at large, within populations. This trope of amputation has, I think, another dimension of meaning when seen alongside the raising of the arm within moment of the ratification of partition at the AICC, which happened within weeks of Gandhi having written those notes to Mountbatten. Photograph taken by Homai Vyarawala, often credited as India's first female photographer. The raising of the arm here, I think, has also, in a way, the threatening idea of amputation that runs as a trope within the exhibition, not just as an amputation of the limb, but as an amputation of the land, which you see in the work of Zarina Hashmi, a line that cuts through the landscape. But also other lines, borders across the world, there are tense borders, borders where multiple amputations occur. Uh, this idea of severing or cutting, in a way, is carried on to the entire map in Mona Hatum's work, where essentially a map cut drops down to become a bag and produces, in a way, an access to read the uh, trunks and boxes that travel to the hands of refugees that move the very border that gets drawn in Zarina's work, carrying possessions and carrying stories that you also read alongside those boxes. In a way, this location of the refugee camp 
into which many of these trunks traveled is a form that repeats in the exhibition in the work of SL Parasher an artist who moved between Pakistan to India at the moment of partition but on arrival hears this news of his trip to Paris having just been confirmed and thus he goes back to Pakistan to complete paperwork only to realize that the journey back is almost a life threatening journey he finds himself alive but in a refugee camp at Ambala where he begins to draw on scraps of paper portraits of fellow refugees but also portraits of refugees made with the soil uh, of the refugee camp In Henry Cartier's Bressons Games at a Refugee Camp shot at Kurukshetra one of India's largest refugee camps at the time is a unusual moment of lightness in a dense moment of the camp where you see refugees with arms raised once again figure of the arm repeats itself but with another density because here it almost appears that the refugees are in a state of flight but also in a state of fall this is seen alongside the work of paul pfeiffer where you see soccer players constantly in a state of fall what is of course erased is the action of the foul that often takes place on a line and what is of course a line but a border in a field just as that moment of aggression or assault often happens on the borderline between nations as it often gets played out on the field the three videos of falling soccer players in a way point to a rather peculiar image of a chase in an open landscape here an antelope is seen running but perhaps seen running so fast on a mobius strip that as if in a causal loop it is now seen chasing the leopard the prey finally seems to have caught up with the perpetrator in a way pointing to a running thread with the exhibition which is this idea of a causal loop the image of the causal loop is in a way sort of repeated through the earliest drawings of the physicist mathematician roger penrose trying to work out a stack is that you as you climb you find yourself return to the point where you began it's a form that i think points to the very stack is in the exhibition that runs between the two levels of the exhibition where in a way your own movement up the steps triggers the sound of the shepherd tone by the cognitive scientist Roger Shepherd that produces a few notes that our brain begins to cognize as a constantly ascending and perhaps even an anxiety producing tone which is in a way an interstitial pointer to the way turn in the exhibition as one goes between the levels of the exhibition where say a work such as somnath hor's wounds where the very surface of the artwork itself forms callus scar tissue wound is seen alongside the luminosity in mona hatum's hot spot where the form of a tense hot spot on the planet now seems to almost like a pandemic spread through the entire planet uh, where the planet itself becomes a hot spot that kind of bleeds a blood red into the exhibition an after image that is carried into the cool calm blue of ukrainian artist mikola rydny's sea coast that progressively receives a sound of advancing aircraft a kind of a sound of invasion that a video he made almost 6 years before the previous invasion of ukraine by russia an image that could be played out not just through the first invasion but the second invasion and a moment that you actually find almost the scale of human displacement in ukraine begin to mirror and superimpose on to the human displacement that we saw at the time of partition thus bringing in some way this idea of 
an entanglement of a returning hierarchical causal loop that we reflect on through the Gandhi nodes, through partition, through displacement, through amputation, a recurrent phenomena that comes back again and again and again.